It's 2023 and Flutter Forward is here and a new version of Tart is out now on the stable channel. But before we get to the amazing features that is getting released this quarter, let's look back how Dart has evolved in the last one year. We are talking features that were released from Dart 2.15 to Dart 2.18 such as constructed tariffs, enhanced enums, super initializer parameters and improved named arguments. If you want a refresher on these or you're learning these for the very first time, stay tuned because I will be breaking them down for you this, in this video. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. For all the features that we mentioned in this video, we will be working with just one example. And it's tax season, so the example that I chose is around money. And do you know what is the opposite pronunciation of money? Enum! Okay. So enums, we have a love and hate relationship with enums, right? Like we love how easy it is to set up. However, we soon get frustrated because we want to do more with it, but we can't. However, with Dart 2.7, when extension methods came around, it was very easy to extend on enums and add more functionality, such as this. So we have the enum bank account type, which has the value savings and checking. We create an extension on the bank account type enum and we call it type extension. And in this, we suppose we want to get the minimum limit associated with that enum value. So we can basically create a switch case where if it's savings we basically have hundred dollars and if it's a checking account we have zero dollars in the similar manner you can have a lot of switch cases for different types of properties associated with your enum values now this worked well for us but things seemed a little scattered around and it gets ugly very quick with giant switch statements now imagine you have much more properties like 10 15 properties that you want to associate with your enum value you will have to write giant huge switch statements for each of your property and that will be a little inconvenient very soon. Now this gets better with our 2.17 where enums are enhanced and allowed to have members like constructors, getters, fields, methods, etc. So imagine you have this enum class bank account type which has the savings and checking. Now it would be so much amazing if you could add the minimum limit in the value itself just like this now here you add the hundred dollar constant value for savings and zero dollar for a checking account basically it's a property of the enum class called minimum limit and is of type double and of course you will also have a constructor which takes in that property so in this case it has to be a constant constructor since most of the values that we have in an enum class is also going to be constants correction i meant every instance of an enum class are going to be constants along with its values. So here you can add as many types and properties that you want for your enum values and add it to your constructor. And while you define your enum values, you can also associate the constant properties along with it just like this. So now your enums act like mini classes, which helps you define a set of constant values along with its associated supporting constants as well which also means that accessing the members of this enum class is the same behavior of any other class member. Now, one more thing that was pretty frustrating with using extension methods on enums is that static members used to be treated as a pretty distant relative in your family. So imagine we have a static method called print available account info, which basically prints all the possible accounts on this particular bank. So here this is defined in the extension method, like in the older way. But when we have to use this, we would be expecting to do bank account type dot print available account info because this is associated with that enum class. However, it was not possible earlier and instead we had to call the extension method type and then call the static member on it, which does not seem like they're associated with the enum type. And of course, if you have your extension method and your enum class on two different files, you basically have to import two files in this case. And again, this does not seem pretty convenient enough. But with enhanced enums, static members feel like family again. <laughs> 
so here you have the print available account info which is defined inside the enum class so when you have to access this static member you don't have to call any other class you have to call the enum class that is defining the static member and this feels like a family again moving on let's elaborate on the bank account class and see what are the properties and methods in it so here we have the class bank account which has some basic details like the name balance type account number and the mailing address and the list of transactions and of course we have a constructor where if you can see the name and balance is a required member and uh, mailing address is an optional and all of these three are named parameters and type and account number are positional parameters and we also of course have some methods which is for to deposit the money the withdraw check balance getting the transactions transfer or generate an account number but we mostly care about the properties and the constructor for this class so let's just focus on that but let's talk about a subclass on bank account called savings account which extends bank account and uh, of course it will have its own property which is an interest rate that you want to add on to your savings account and and of course it will also have a method which is supposed to add interest on your balance and we have a constructor which is going to have the interest rate but this is also extending the bank account so in this case this is a subclass of bank account so it has to pass some properties back to the super class so it has to call its super constructor and if you are creating an object from the subclass we will have to pass all the properties back to its super class to create the object properly so in this case these are the super parameters that we are forwarding back to the super class and it looks a little overwhelming because uh, okay so we have first types of the super parameters which is suppose in this case bank account integer of uh, account number the string name double balance string mailing address and then we are passing them to the super constructor again now what you see here is that we are repeating these values or writing these values repeatedly again and again just to forward it to the super constructor now imagine if you had 5 to 10 more parameters added to your super class then this subclass's constructor will look something like this well it looks ugly and it is very cumbersome to write so many repeated variable names again and again just to forward it back to your super constructor So of course this was not convenient at all but we have a relief because from dot 2.17 we now have support for super initializer parameters in constructors what i mean is that that this constructors where you have these repeated variables you can now choose to remove the super section completely and instead of writing the types of the super parameters just like how we write the this dot interest rate you can instead write super dot type super dot account name and super dot name etc so basically this reduces your constructor to a lot less variables and lot less repeatability now as you can see there is a huge improvement when we go from this syntax to this syntax Now let's talk about making an object of the savings account class. So it's the same we have the uh, object name and then we invoke the constructor. Just for your reference I'm going to also show you what the constructor look like where we have first a positional parameter for type and account number, then we have the interest rate, then we have the named parameters for name, balance, mailing address. So as you can see the type is a savings type. account number is going to be generated interest rate is 7.5 the name is something the balance is going to be $1000 and the mailing address is mentioned here now everything seems fine about this however the order of things seem a little weird to me it would be great to define the name first before i define any of the other properties because that order seems more sense to me so dart has a restriction that all the named parameters has to be after the positional parameters but not anymore with dart 2.17 this restriction on named arguments is removed so we can define the name on top of the positional parameters 
Now Dart recognizes the list of positional parameters by its position, which means that the position and the placement of these parameters cannot change, but there is no restriction that a named parameter cannot be in between this positional parameter list. Only the order and the placement in the list has to be maintained. Now proceeding to the next section, I'm just going to make sure that you remember function tear offs. So I'm going to give you a refresher on that so it's easier for you to understand the next section. Now let's imagine that you have an object called new account on which you're calling the deposit method on it and giving it an argument of $500 suppose. Now you can tear off the method call from it and save it in a variable called deposit funds which technically will be a void of function which takes double as a parameter. Now this deposit funds has the reference of this entire new account dot deposit, which is the information of the receiver and which method to call on this receiver. You can also pass this deposit funds variable to other functions as callback and they can call the method on it. So technically this deposit funds 500 is now equal to what we would have done earlier, which is new account dot deposit 500. So imagine you also have like a widget called funds view where it takes a void function of tuple and in this case basically it needs to uh, get the reference of a function so it can deposit the funds. So here instead of a lambda we can actually send that turn off function. So here we basically have the deposit funds and if you see this is exactly equal to the reference of the new account or deposit function. So we are basically tearing off the arguments out of the function and just passing the reference to the function to the widget. So whenever the widget needs to call, you can see in the second line deposit funds uh, 500, the widget can call it with its argument whenever needed. If you want more of it, you can either check out the video on tear offs on the Flutter's YouTube channel or you can go to the language store on dart.dev. But if you're good with function tear offs and you're able to understand it now, we can now move to the next example. So now in your savings account class, we are going to just strap off all the unnecessary details. And here we are going to create a factory constructor, which will create empty accounts with zero balance for a list of people. So here it just takes a name of uh, the person that we need to create an account for. And this will call the savings account constructor. The only variable here is the name. Otherwise, we are basically going to define that the type is going to be savings. We generate an account number. The rate is going to be five and the balance is going to be zero. So here we have created the factory constructor. So now we have a customer list, suppose John and Doe. Now in the second line, if you can see, we are creating a list of accounts. What we are basically doing here is that we are calling map on the customer list and creating a list of savings account objects from the name given in the list. So here you can see that we also have a lambda here. Now with the knowledge that we've had with the function tear offs refresher, this probably means that instead of this lambda, we can probably send a turn off constructor method, right? But it was not possible till dart 2.14. Till dart 2.14, constructor tear offs did not act like function tear offs even though technically they are almost the same. But with Dart 2.15, we finally have support for constructor terror. So now this line can be reduced to just savings.empty. Now let's see another example. Suppose we have a column and we have a widget called account display view where it takes a savings account object and displays it in the view. So here we are basically calling the map again on accounts, which is a list of savings account objects. And again, there is a Lambda here. So we can basically tear off the arguments here and reduce it to a turn of constructor. However, this will not work because that compiler treats this as the type of a class rather than a constructor. So in this case, if you have an unnamed constructor that you're trying to tear off, you can add a dot new on it to basically tell the Dart compiler that this is referring to the unnamed constructor and not 
the type of the class. Now that's not all. There are other great improvements that happen on the language like the improved type inference or some breaking changes around mixins. You can find the entire evolution of Dart on this page. But outside of the language, there are some other great improvements happening on the Dart libraries or the pop.dev where we have a new funding section or added support for screenshots for your packages. Most of it and all the newer language features are going to be covered in this Flutter Forward week by the Flutter team. So head over there to know more. And of course, if you learn something new today and you are ready to tackle the shiny new features coming in this release, then return the gratitude by subscribing to my channel and sharing it with your other curious friends. And thank you so much for staying till the end of this video. Have a great learning, a great week and a great new year.